Major funding for this Re 180 workshop is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future. Intel Corporation is a proud supporter of PBS. The Intel Innovation in Education initiative provides teachers with the resources to inspire their students and encourage them to unlock their potential. At Chiff Peanut Butter, we know just how choosy you are when it comes to your family, including the shows you value most. Public television encourages kids' curiosity and love of learning, and Jif is proud to support CyberChase on behalf of all choosy moms and dads. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This program was also made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Workshop 9, The Art of the Memoir, The Writings of Francisco Jimenez. Have you ever heard the expression, truth is stranger than fiction? Sometimes true personal experiences are more amazing than anything you could make up. Perhaps that explains why autobiographies and memoirs are so popular today. They provide accounts of the author's true personal experiences. In this workshop, we spotlight the life and work of Francisco Jimenez. His recollections of growing up in California as an illegal immigrant are still powerful and relevant today. First, you'll discover how Francisco turned his experiences into an award-winning memoir. Then, through his eyes, you'll learn what it's like to live as a migrant farm worker, always fearful of being deported for crossing the border illegally. Later, Francisco will reveal how he blossomed from a struggling young reader and writer into the major success he is today. Our video story profiles another writer with a profoundly different yet equally inspiring life. We'll meet Nobel Prize winner Elie Wiesel and examine the painful process he went through to write Night, the wrenching memoir of his experiences in a World War II concentration camp. Reading One, Writing a Memoir. How do you tell the story of your life? Do you simply write down every single thing that you remember? What about those things you've forgotten or never knew? These are just a few of the questions Francisco Jimenez asked himself when he set out to write his memoir, Breaking Through. Francisco's story begins with his family's deportation to Mexico. Their painful expulsion from the U.S. was the first step in the story. From there, Francisco chose to tell his story chronologically in the order everything happened. In this short essay, Francisco reveals both how and why he created the autobiographical work, Breaking Through. Reading 2, from Breaking Through. For 10 years, Francisco Jimenez lived in constant fear. He and his family were living and working illegally in the U.S. They were hardly the only ones. Over the years, tens of millions of Mexicans have made the perilous journey across the border in search of a better life in the U.S. Like Francisco's family, many found jobs as migrant farm workers, living in labor camps and moving from town to town. But the life of an illegal immigrant is always risky. At any time, you might be found out and deported back to your country. In this excerpt from his memoir, Breaking Through, Francisco Jimenez recounts his family's sometimes painful, sometimes inspiring experience. Reading 3, an interview with Francisco Jimenez. Francisco Jimenez discovered the power of language as a sophomore in high school when his English teacher asked him to read John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. Around the same time, he began writing essays about his own experiences and eventually completed the manuscript for his first memoir, The Circuit, which in turn inspired the sequel, Breaking Through. In this revealing interview, Francisco offers his advice to aspiring writers and explains why he has chosen to commit his experiences to paper.
What happens when your memories are too painful to put down in a memoir, yet so important they must be shared? That was the challenge Elie Wiesel faced when he set out to record his agonizing struggles as a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp in his award-winning memoir, Night. Elie Wiesel, a Holocaust memoir. Elie Wiesel was born in Romania, in the tiny town of Siget, in 1928. I know every house, every window, literally every stone of the pavement. Now, 50 years later, I still dream about it. I think about it. Ellie was only 11 in 1939 when Germany, under Adolf Hitler, began to invade Europe. Hitler and his political party, the Nazis, blamed the Jewish people for all of Germany's problems. So wherever Hitler's armies went, Jews were rounded up and sent into prisons called concentration camps. In 1944, the Nazis swept through Siget. Along with 15-year-old Elie and his family, thousands of Jews from Siget were deported to Auschwitz, a notorious concentration camp in Poland. Separated from his mother and sisters, Elie managed to remain with his father at Auschwitz. There he was starved, beaten, and worked almost to death. Sadly, his father, mother, and sister did not survive the camps. Over six million Jews were murdered in the Holocaust, Hitler's brutal program to wipe out the Jewish people of Europe. Elie miraculously survived. When Germany was defeated in 1945, American troops liberated the concentration camp where he was imprisoned. And I remember the American soldiers. They were crying like children and cursing cursing. After the war, Elie moved to Paris, where he began a new life as a journalist. But he avoided writing about what he'd experienced in the Holocaust. That was still too painful, too close to revisit in a memoir. Finally, after 10 years, he began to write about it. The process of documenting this terrible experience was sad and difficult. I wanted to remember every single moment, every detail, every face, every, every eye. And, and, and every moment of our, of our agony. And of course, there were certain things I couldn't, I couldn't touch, for instance. Uh, I couldn't speak about my mother. I, mean, I, couldn't, I couldn't speak about my little sister. I couldn't speak about even my father. Uh, even to think about them made, 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 me, made me cry. Ellie's book, Night, was published in 1958. It's not the only book to be written by a Holocaust survivor, but it is one of the most recognized and widely read in the world. Elie Wiesel has written more than 30 other books dealing with Jews, the Holocaust, and the importance of never forgetting the terrible atrocities of the war. When I ask myself, what do all my books have in common? And there's one word, and the word is really memory. It is the attitude towards memory, the obsession with memory, the duty, to remember.